and they heard the message of the angel. And then they go and they tell the disciples who come to see for themselves and then they return to their home. But Mary Magdalene remains at the tomb and she alone encounters Christ in the garden. And we have this um, icon just to the, to the left of the um, Last Supper, the second icon, is that encounter with Mary and Jesus in the garden when she recognizes him, not because of his appearance, but she recognizes him when he says her name. And that's a beautiful thing because it is in that connection when God calls us by name that we come to know him. So I want to share just a few lines from a sermon of the, from the 6th century from the um, Pope Gregory of Rome who says in his, like I said, this sermon, he begins by talking about the, the line in John 20.10, Mary stood near the tomb outside and wept. And he says, this is what should make us measure the strength of love that inflamed the soul of this woman. He's talking about Mary Magdalene. The disciples went away, but she did not go away from the tomb of the Lord. So everyone kind of has this experience. They go back and they tell the disciples, they come, they look, they leave, except for Mary Magdalene. She stays, she stays at the tomb. And then he goes on to say, Pope Gregory goes on to say, she was looking for the one she had not found. She cried while she was looking for him and inflamed by the fire of her love, she burned with the desire of him whom she believed to have been taken away. Now what a, what a beautiful example this is for us about how our hearts should seek Christ, that our hearts should burn for being with the Lord. And so then Pope Gregory goes on, he says, so it happened that she was then alone to see him, she who remained to look for him. And then he says, just sort of the crux of my remarks this morning, for it is perseverance that gives effectiveness to the good work. It is perseverance that gives effectiveness to the good work. So we all have lots of good ideas. We have lots of good intentions. But can we see it through to the end? Because that is perseverance. It is perseverance that is sort of one of the focuses, I said, for today as we commemorate this Sunday of the Myrrh Bearers. So we can sort of define this idea of perseverance as for us as a spiritual virtue, as being God-centered, as having faithful patience, as being motivated by love. Sort of that example that we see of Mary's desire for God that kept her at the tomb. And we can all practice this by our own willingness to ask God for those things that are on our hearts and to keep asking and to be waiting waiting for his answer in his time. You know, in our world, so many things are really just instantaneous for us. Studies show that we're, we're only willing to wait just a couple of seconds for a piece of information on the internet. How many times we hit, hit that button again? Didn't come up. I'm hitting it again. So it's a good spiritual exercise for us to wait. I remember when we were in Uganda back in the 90s building the, our, our sister parish. And one of the things that was extraordinary to me was when people had to travel, because very few people had cars, so they had to wait on public transportation, which was very um, erratic in its schedule. And so people would need to go to perhaps the capital city of Kampala or whatever, they would have to, they would just get ready and they would go to the bus station and then they would wait. I mean, literally sometimes for hours and hours, maybe for days, they would just wait. And their, their patience was just pretty incredible. Sometimes what is required for us is to pray and to pray and to pray, and then 
to wait for results. I remember a woman in this parish who talked about the fact that she would be praying for people who may had, maybe had left the church or people that she was praying for, and she would have them on her, her prayer list for years, and she just never wavered in that um, discipline of keeping those people in her prayers. And so any of us on, a, on the spiritual journey will report that sometimes our spiritual life is not great, but we just must keep on doing what we are doing. Praying, even if we feel like it, we're in the middle of a desert, being faithful in prayer and waiting on God's time. And this is the advice that the spiritual fathers and mothers of the church offer to us. Christ also proclaimed, we must never forget in Matthew 24, 13, those who endure to the end will be saved. Perseverance. So today, we, in, come, in conjunction with the myrrh-bearing women and with Mary, and we see this a great example of perseverance, we also remember Joseph and Nicodemus. Now, these were the two men, of course, that we just heard in the gospel that buried Jesus. And they did not plan for their lives to turn out the way that they did after this action. We don't hear a lot about them after the resurrection in the scriptures, but the Synexati on the listing of the lives of the saints records that Nicodemus, who was a respect, respected man in the, the temple and the synagogue, was immediately banished from the synagogue. So he loses all of his connections, social, religious, economic. And then Joseph is thrown into a deep pit, but he was rescued and then both of them, and Joseph goes to his sort of estate in Arimathea, he had, he had resources. Both of them continue to proclaim the resurrection of Christ to all. Both men who buried Christ lost their status. Joseph lost his homeland because he finally ends up going to England and dies there after preaching the gospel and the resurrection. So the experience of the risen Lord changed them. And it was sacrifice that was their gift. And sacrifice is also a part of perseverance. Things did not go as they had planned for their lives, but by sacrifice, their plans, by sacrificing their plans in their lives, they gained their life. Even when our goal is for holy things, it's for spiritual growth, we need to be ready to, be, to let go of our plan, of how we think we will get there. It involves sacrifice and perseverance. Joseph in Egypt that we remember all through Holy Week was a, is a great example of this. He lost everything, but by sacrifice, perseverance, and trust, he reveals to his brothers who had sold him into slavery that God had blessed this path that had taken him to Egypt by giving him these resources that he had by becoming close to Pharaoh, that he could save his whole family and the whole people of Israel from famine and destruction. So perseverance and sacrifice should really inspire us today as we honor and commemorate the memory of these myrrh-bearing women, not just Mary Magdalene, but all of her companions. The women who, we can see them in this icon of the, of the, uh, of the crucifixion at the top of the windows, that whole group of women who are on the left of the cross, that's Mary Magdalene. Mary, of course, the mother of Jesus, and these other women who were willing to stand at the cross and show their solidarity with this person who's being hanged, crucified with criminals. And then they had the courage and the strength to go to the tomb seeking the Lord. And we also remember Joseph and Nicodemus, as I said, who taught us about sacrifice to proclaim the resurrection. So we're invited by the commemoration of these events and these people to, to strive to apply to their lessons in our lives. A perseverance of that attitude that trusts in the twists and the turns in the road of our life 
and to trust that those things are under God's care. Perseverance that patiently seeks the Lord and his response will finally result in experiencing the risen Lord. And finally, sacrifice. The sacrifice of our will, of our time schedule, meaning the need for our instant results and the need to call all the shots and to allow God's time to, be, to come to fruition and blossom in our lives. And then God will be able to work powerfully in our lives. If we can keep these two virtues of sacrifice and perseverance, we have this opportunity to en encounter our world with greater sense of, of peace. And that will be something that we will be able to share with others who are our co-strugglers, all of us co-strugglers in this world in order to, for us to find our home and our experience in the presence of our risen Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, in countless times, we fall down before you, and we implore you, O good one who loves mankind, that you, having regarded our prayer, may cleanse our souls and bodies from every defilement of flesh and spirit, and grant to us to stand before your holy altar of sacrifice.